Hi everyone, I'm Sabine, and welcome to my channel, where I make art videos. Are you intimidated by the first blank page of a sketchbook? Do you want to do something special, but you're not really sure what? Well, I have five foolproof ideas for that first page in any sketchbook, and this video is going to show you how to get started. Ah, the intimidating first page. A lot of people skip it. I know I do. I always want some kind of beautiful title page, and I think I'm going to come back to it when I'm done. But no matter where you start your sketchbook, you have to commit to drawing something. So I've come up with five ideas that will get you started to break in that new sketchbook with something cool looking. Let's get you started on the right foot. Idea number one. Put it in a frame. A lot of people like to put a title and dates on their first page, and that's good practice for any sketchbook, but it's kind of boring. One way to make it more visually appealing is to write your title and then put a fancy picture frame around it. You don't have to stop there either. You can draw a bunch of picture frames, and then your page will look like the wall of an art gallery, just to make your art look special. You can draw little pictures in the other frames, or, if you have loose artwork lying around, this is a great place to paste it into your sketchbook. Just paste it into the frames. If you don't want to get too fancy, you could also frame your title to look like a sign or maybe a warning label. Just giving it a border will make things look more interesting than a title and date alone. Idea number two. Draw the tools and materials you're planning on using in the sketchbook. Line everything up and then draw them all on the first page. You probably have an idea what you want to use in this sketchbook, and you also probably have some favorite tools that you always use. But this can also be a challenge to try new tools, kind of like setting a goal for yourself. This is also a fancy way to make a swatch of your materials. Once you've drawn them all, you can then use them to color in or shade the tool, and then you can add a little swatch beside it so you know what the material looks like on the paper. This is a great way to test out new tools, and it looks much more interesting than just a plain old color swatch. Idea number three, draw a map. It can be as big as the world or as small as your neighborhood. Obviously, this works really well for a travel sketchbook. You can put the places you travel to on the map, and it'll remind you of your adventures. I bought this sketchbook when I was in the Yukon, so I'm drawing that territory and the route we took up the Alaska Highway to remind me where we went. However, this idea can also work for a normal sketchbook that you use around home. You can draw where you live on a map of the world, or draw a map of your neighborhood and plot out your favorite haunts. Maybe you could even draw a place you'd like to visit in the future to inspire you to plan a trip. Idea number four. Draw a scene where you can add a mark for every page you finish. It could be a winter scene where you add a snowflake, or a garden where you add a flower, or in this case, I am painting the night sky and I'm going to add a star for every page I finish. If you have an idea for this one, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. I can only come up with a few ideas, but I think this one has a lot of possibilities. As a tip, Think of how many pages your sketchbook has before you pick your scene. I think stars in the sky or snowflakes works better for a high page count, whereas something like a flower garden might be better for a lower one. Either way, it's an interesting visual way to mark your progress, and the page will be finished when your sketchbook is finished. So it's incentive to keep finishing more pages, which might be good if you're like me and have trouble finishing sketchbooks. Idea number five, add to a found image. To do this, start by going through an old magazine or any paper product you can cut up and pick out a single object. I've chosen an article of clothing for this page. Cut it out and then finish a drawing based on your cutout. This is like that game where one person draws something and then you have to finish it, but you can play this all by yourself. 
Yes, I am an introvert, and I feel no shame in playing a game all by myself. I do this a lot in my sketchbooks, so it's not specific to starting the first page, but it is a fun way to get going when you don't know what to draw. You might see something that will inspire you and then give you a theme for this sketchbook. Run with it. One tip though, if you're going to do this, pencils and some other tools don't always go right up to the edge of the cutout. So if you glue it down first, you might get a white line around it. Instead, trace an outline of the cutout, then draw in your artwork, or at least put down a base layer. Then glue the cutout on top. There you go. Five fresh ideas for ways to get started with the first page of your sketchbook. Now you have a cool opening page, and you can totally mess up the rest of your sketchbook and make all the mistakes you want. Which of these do you like best? Is there one you want to try for your new sketchbook? Let me know in the comments, and if you do try one of these openers, I'd love to see how it turns out. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome art videos, and if you like this video, please hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.